Welcome to the workshop, I'm Ron and today we're going to strip down this entire lamp for a complete restoration. If you want to do this to your angle poise lamp, you're going to need a few tools. As I mentioned before, this is a lampshade ring remover tool that's available on our website. You're going to need a flat bladed screwdriver, a flat bladed small electrician screwdriver, hide faced hammer, set of wire cutters to cut the cabling off. If you're going to save the cable and you won't need these, socket set with a 14mm socket, a 5mm socket, a 5mm spanner and a four and a three mil drill. The first step in any restoration is a thorough investigation of the faults. So before you strip anything down, identify faults, make a list of them and the possible solutions. With this particular lamp, as you can see, someone's made a very good job of repairing this broken arm. A little bit Heath Robinson, but still functions, although the uh, repair isn't very pretty. We'll have to weld this, as obviously the uh, arms aren't available as a replacement part, unless you Frankenstein it from a different lamp. So this will be covered a different video, but our steps today is to strip the entire lamp down. One other fault identified is the missing spreader piece which should fit in this uh, between these two arms that'll have to be sourced or manufactured other minor issues include the missing grommets which is my pet hate one last fault we've identified with this lamp is the condition of the springs although they are not particularly rusty they have been distorted as you can see with the opening of the coils so we can try to repair the spring, if not, it may need to be replaced. So now we've uh, made an assessment of the lamp and its faults. We've wrote all the uh, required parts down. It's time to start removing the components. Obviously the first thing is to unplug it and then remove the bulb. The next step is to remove the bulb holder. You may recognize this bulb holder removal tool which grips the collar inside the lamp. Obviously, there's a link to these tools in the description or on the website. Very useful. We will not be reusing any of these components. So at this point, you can simply The next step is to remove the shade, simply ease out the arms and remove the shade. We can now start removing the cable. You can simply just pull it out. When it comes to the lower arm, if you're not going to be keeping the cable, one trick is to simply cut it again and then you can pull the cable from the bottom on. Next step is to remove the springs. And place them in a storage container. To remove the centre spring, it's covered in another video, but basically just remove the tension from the spring, slide out the lower retaining pin, and undo the bolt. To remove the bolt, 
requires a 5mm spinner and socket. It's important that you don't lose any of the parts. And a little trip what I use is when you're dismantling it, try to reassemble it with the parts off the lamp. So we'll slide out the retaining bolt, remove the spring, ensure that you keep the two top hat washers and the nut so you can reassemble them just so that you don't lose any of the parts from your storage tin the next step is to remove the locking arm and the dog leg spacers do that by removing the knurled nut. This one's got the original one on, which is quite nice. You'll notice there's also a very fine washer. Push the bolt through. Take note of the arrangement of the dog leg spacers. Slide out the retaining bolt. Remove the dog leg spacers. You reassemble them in the order they came out. It is easier for remembering how to reassemble it. If in doubt make a small diagram. It's always useful for future reference. And then you can spread the arms and remove them from the base stand. Point of note that there is a brass insert in the lower arms. Sometimes you can get them out, sometimes they're very difficult. Obviously this has one fitted, but the other side is missing due to it being snapped. So we're going to have to identify these brass spacers and then manufacture one. These sort of little surprises often turn up when you're dismantling a lamp. Staying with the arms, you can dismantle the knuckles. Same system, 5mm spinner and a socket if you need it. You can see the uh, brass bracer. Ensure you reassemble everything so you can remember how it all goes. When you get down to the actual plastic inserts and pins, I'll show you how to strip them out. In a moment, we'll go back to the knuckle and remove the board. Again, if you have any doubt, make a diagram. see how this one's quite tight but if you continue to unscrew it the threads on the bolt helps force the bolt through the plastic spacer and again reassemble the bolt The next 
step is to remove the shade holder. I'm showing you how to do this in a different video. But if you note, there's a small pin protruding through the bottom of the arm. You depress the pin with a screwdriver and then ease the fork up. And sometimes you'll find a small bit of spring steel inside of the arm. On this occasion, it's not fitted. The next stage is to strip down the base. If you lift the base up and turn it over, you'll find there's a, a nut and a bolt. Obviously some of these are imperial, but you'll find that the 14mm socket will fit both. So you can undo the, uh, the nut. Sometimes they're quite stiff. And you may need to put a screwdriver on the bolt head whilst you're undoing the bottom. Just to unscrew the central bolt. You'll notice there's a very thin spring washer. and the show lead bolt. I'm deliberately putting this together incorrectly so I don't lose the thin washer because it's the same size as the show lead bolt and just slip straight off. Put that in storage. You may not know that the uh, the base of the angle poise 1227 has a cover shield over top of it. So this is usually where people get quite a shock with how much rust is in there. What you can do is if you take the uh, the central bolt for your fork, screw it on underneath. Usually the base is threaded. And then use that as a handle pull the base off. This is a rather nice one. Normally this is uh, covered in rust. I think it's been off recently and someone's put some paint on it. Sometimes you may need to get in there with a screwdriver and gently ease the sides up. Try not to distort the actual frame. There you have the two parts. These are available already chromed as a replacement part. If you're planning on doing a restoration involving metal polishing or chroming, you can buy these pre-chromed. The reason that these cover plates were on is the, uh, the casting, especially on the early ones, wasn't a particularly good quality. In fact, they had the very early 1227s um, had very thick paint called crinkle paint so thick that you couldn't see the imperfections of the casting and then later they devised a better quality pressing the better quality metal to go over top so that's the large parts stripped down now if you remember we had the uh, the arms had plastic pivot point and space has fitted. What we'll do now is look at how to get those out. One useful tip when removing these, you can use the hole in the cast base as a bit of a rest whilst these are driven out. If we take the, the arm that has no pivot points on, that can be placed to one side. You're left with the two lower arms and the central upper one. Taking the upper arm, this is the one that had the lampshade fork attached. You'll see that the spacer 
has a small insert. Now that small insert is about 4mm. You can take a parallel punch and drive that out. But I'd be thinking most people wouldn't have them, although they are available on the website. You could use a 4mm drill. You take a 4mm drill, sometimes you can actually push it down by hand. Other times you might need to give it a bit of persuasion. But in this case, I think we can push that one out. If you use the hole of the base as a rest and then lie the spacer and the arm just slightly across the hole to support both sides of it and then push it through. You'll see there's a small spacer, take the insert and then the plastic spacer. When it comes to the lower spring attachment points these are the ones that go like this take note that the pin is on the opposite side to the spacer the dog leg spacer and the spreader bar which is actually missing off this one so don't put these back in the wrong orientation to remove them, at this occasion you'll need a 3mm glide across the hole to change hand. 3mm drill, spacer and pin. The other end of the smaller arm, this is the one that mounts the springs on, remember, that doesn't have an insert and the plastic end fittings can simply be levered out. Show that again. Take your 3mm drill, put it on the pin, tap it through. Remove your spacer. Achieve the pin. Assemble it. Put in your tin. The other end can be removed with just a screwdriver. One last thing to look at would be the uh, the lower fork, just to highlight the fibre washers. If you remove the fibre washers from both arms. On this occasion, I'll be stripping this lamp and uh, repainting it. So there's no need to remove these pins. If you were going to have it chromium plated, because it's a different metal to what the fork is, these pins will have to be removed. You get a pair of pliers and remove one and then drive that out with a parallel punch. But in this case, I don't have to remove the pins, so I'll leave them in. But I will retain the fibre washers. As you can see, the lamp stripped down to its component parts, ready for it to be paint stripped. We'll cover that in a different uh, video. But for the moment, I'm Ron. I hope this has been of some help. We'll catch you next time.